Hello to all you RDs of the future. Uh, my name is Arlene Grant Holcomb. I'm a recently retired director of the dietetics program at Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo, California. And I'm creating this series of videos to add to and supplement the advising that you're getting from your own DPD director. And um, this particular group of videos is going to be about applying. I have my other series had to do with the personal statement, which I started because that was what I was getting the most questions about at the time. Uh, my hope, I don't know how many parts it's going to have. Normally I would cover this over three seminars with our Cal Poly students, and each seminar is about an hour and 45 minutes. So I hope it won't take that long to get through it all. I'll try to be brief. Uh, in this first section, we're going to talk mostly about getting ready to apply. We won't really get into the details of the internship or computer matching uh, until a little bit later. But uh, it is a very detailed process. All of the things in the image on the right-hand side of the screen are things to be thinking about or that you've already thought about. And we're going to uh, take it from here. So why am I doing this? Well, I'm uh, the one in the black cap and gown, the older one in the picture on the right. That was our last uh, graduation in spring of 2019. And it's because of students uh, like the ladies in this picture and so many that have gone before them that I uh, continue to love and enjoy advising dietetic students and applicants who want to be registered dietitians. I love the profession of dietetics. I've, it's never grown old for me. And uh, DICAS is a challenging process to navigate without support. And there are other options besides using DICAS for some programs that don't choose that particular platform. So there are lots of things to consider as you go through the process. I have my bachelor's degree in dietetics and food administration through Cal Poly, the university where I ended up teaching. I did my dietetic internship at the University of California in San Francisco, and much later in my life, uh, earned an education doctorate from Pepperdine University. I practiced dietetics for 20 years in a little bit of clinical practice, mostly food and nutrition services management, and a little bit of WIC excuse me, public health nutrition. I spent the, the last 20 years as faculty in the DPD program at Cal Poly and the most recent eight years as the dietetics program director. I've had hundreds of advisees over those years and thankfully uh, hundreds of dietitians that uh, I like to think um, I played a part in their readiness for practice. What my hope uh, with these videos is that it is definitely time to start building your application. Now, if you are, uh, I'm creating this video in January and in this application cycle, the applications are all due uh, February 15th. So I'm certain that everyone that's applying this spring is already well on the way. But if you're thinking about fall or looking ahead to next spring, it's definitely time to start building your application. This is for all students and grads that are interested in becoming registered dietitians or registered dietitian nutritionists. It's the same credential. We just have a choice about which name that we want to use. We will get into the nuts and bolts of DICAS, the Dietetic Internship Centralized Application System. We will talk about options for non-DICAS programs, which might be simply programs that choose not to use the DICAS application. There might be the new future education model programs, and there might be coordinated programs that also have chosen not to use DICAS. We'll talk about where to start, how to narrow your choices, some myths about the process, and I'll share with you advice from recent grads and interns that I know from my Cal Poly experience. Again, the season that we're in right now is um, to apply in February. That group of applicants will be notified in April, and typically those programs start somewhere during the summer, 
uh, early, mid, late, and sometimes even in the fall. There is another application cycle where applications are due late September. Applicants are notified in November, and typically those programs start in January. There's a much smaller number of programs that participate in the fall application match season, but it's still a very good number of programs. In the picture on the right, uh, that's a picture from one of our favorite uh, hiking spots looking down into the San Luis Obispo area and the arrow points to our campus, which uh, stretches um, across most of, I think I can put the cursor, our ag lands are out here. The core of the campus is here and we have a performing arts center and most of our uh, dormitories and things are out here. Um, it's a beautiful campus on the central coast of California. So I chose the, um, this particular backdrop. Uh, it's actually a picture of the mise en place for a batch of cookies that I was making during the recent holiday season. I hope all of you are familiar with the term mise en place from your foods classes. It's a term, if you are not familiar with it, it's a term that means from the French to make ready or install. And it's the process of getting ready to make something using a recipe that requires or advises that you first of all read the entire recipe all the way through, then clean your work area, then gather your ingredients and weigh them or measure them out so that you have them all in containers. You'll see this if you watch the Food Network. All of the chefs on the Food Network that are doing demonstrations typically will have mise en place prepared for them for all of their ingredients. And I like to think of the readiness for your after graduation plans of dietetics uh, a bit like mise en place. You have to read the instructions, you have a number of things to get ready. You may not be weighing and measuring ingredients, but you are strategically planning the part-time jobs that you'll take, considering volunteer opportunities. You're retaking classes if you need to. You're developing relationships with faculty and work supervisors that will serve as references and recommendations for you down the road. And you're thinking about what your end product wants to be. It may not be a batch of cookies, uh, but it's going to be a lifelong career for you. And there are things to think about before graduation, immediately after graduation, and then depending on what your plan is for immediately after graduation, that may include a dietetic internship and or graduate school. So it's really not too soon to th start thinking about it as an undergraduate. I encourage students uh, during their uh, starting with their junior summer before their junior year to start looking at the academy website, looking at programs, uh, reaching out to former graduates who have interned in places that they are interested in. Now the important thing is that oftentimes Students and applicants' ideas about where they would like to go and how they would like to study can change a lot between junior, senior, and uh, graduation time. But if you haven't started exploring, uh, there's that much more to learn and to apply during that time. So during downtime, during vacations, a uh, time when you have a little bit of free time, that's the time to start uh, getting your plans together, so to speak, or as I said, your mise en place. So why do I make videos? Why do program directors talk about this so much? Well, the process for applying for dietetic internship or future education model programs or graduate programs is a competitive process. It is complex, meaning that there are many parts and there are also many details to the many parts. And it is, uh, there are even, as I said, different ways of applying that uh, if you choose one program, you'll use their application. If you choose a different program, you'll use DICAS. 
The other challenge is that most applicants are still in school, and so you still have academic responsibilities. Some are both working and going to school, and then for the applicant who's applying after they've graduated, they're usually working. So you have the obligations of your work schedule combined with making time to uh, build this application. Now at Cal Poly, I created, and this is not meaningful to people in other parts of the country, but for our students, uh, there tends to be a um, focus on several schools in California. So I create this little spreadsheet and I show my students, look, you and six of your classmates are all applying to Sacramento State, or you're, there are six of you that are applying to Cal State Long Beach, or there are, um, four of you that are applying to Cal State Northridge. And it's tough when you are applying against your peers and you have similar backgrounds and similar uh, experiences. And so I challenge the applicants to step out of their comfort zone and to look to places outside of the state or outside of um, where, other where multiple other students might be applying, again, if they can afford it and if they can, uh, if that's reasonable for them and for their family. I have also found at Cal Poly that not enough students consider the combined programs, the MSDIs or the MPHDIs. I imagine that is going to change over the next very few years because by 2024, a master's degree will be required. So I expect that both the availability and the interest in combined programs is probably going to increase each year. But at least as of last year, only a portion of our students combi applied to combined programs. Most students applied to dietetic internship and they're alone. And usually they're, they had two reasons. Uh, the first was that they just, they were tired of going to school and they just wanted to do the internship and get to work. The second was they really didn't know what they wanted to do their master's in. They didn't know if they wanted an MPH or an MS, and they felt that they needed to practice for a bit before making a determination about that. And those are both very valid, realistic reasons not to consider it. But if those reasons don't apply to you, then it's worth a thought. And we'll talk more about that in a different presentation. Um, I, again, took some screenshots here. The particular numbers are not all that meaningful, but I obviously keep records of our graduates that match. And um, what I have are the two most recent years that I was involved with, the spring of 2018 and spring of 2019. And again, we had students match in the spring of 2018 with higher ed uh, GPAs, uh, ranging from a 2.91 all the way up to a 3.99. And in the spring of 2019, we had applicants match with GPAs that ranged from a 2.98 to a 3.99 as well. I cut it off at the bottom. but um, And the average of those that matched uh, in 2018 was 3.46 very strong average. The median was 3.39. So the good news is if your grades are just above a B, that's great. If your grades are just below a B, then normally uh, those students have added something to their resume. They've normally uh, taken a year or two after and worked, taken the DTR exam and worked as a DTR and then applied and then they become a very strong and desirable candidate. At least that's my experience at Cal Poly. I cannot speak directly about the matching grades and experiences in other universities, and that's information um, to gather from your own didactic program director. In 2019 at Cal Poly, we had the best match that we ever had. We had more applicants and more matches than ever. We matched 41 applicants out of, um, I think there were 45 altogether. And of those, 
there were 30 seniors and 29 of the seniors matched. That was a phenomenal match record. Um, and the GPAs were even higher, but we did have GPAs that ranged all over the map. So I say that in that while grades are important, you can see that students match with grades all the way from a 2.9 up to a 3.99 or almost a 4.0. I used to spend a lot of time uh, talking about this graph, which shows the disparity between uh, applications and available spots in dietetic internships. But what you'll see is the last date that it was updated was 2015. Ascend or the Academy no longer produces this. And I think a part of it is because the gaps are narrowing. And I'll touch a little bit more on that uh, as we go along. The good news for all of you is there are fewer applicants and there are more spots available to train to become a dietitian. I use this, I call it, we get better with age. Again, this is a graph uh, from the records I keep or kept at Cal Poly. But my point with this is to show you that in the, the first year one column, and again, I did not update for 18, 19, because this would be normally something that I would do in the summer. And because I retired, I handed it off uh, to my predecessor. But the point is that though many applicants match in the first year that they apply, more applicants continue to match in the years after. And in fact, this past year, I actually worked with an applicant that had graduated 10 years prior to when she was applying. So the point is each, if you do things during the time after graduation, your application gets stronger, you're more mature, you may add a DTR credential, you may learn to speak Spanish. There's so many things that can happen in that intervening time that make you a stronger applicant. So it's definitely, while it's wonderful if you can apply and match as a senior. There are also hundreds, uh, maybe thousands, uh, who wait and work and uh, strategically plan to, to apply one or two or three, even up to five years after they've graduated. Uh, this again is a, a visual, the map is just a map. I don't have anything in particular marked um, on the map, but the, um, this is the list of the programs that our students matched to in 2019. And there are little numbers. Uh, you can see that in some programs, uh, Children's Hospital of Colorado, for example, they took two of our graduates, which is unusual. I always tell the students, don't plan on being in a cohort with one of your classmates. The important thing here is that uh, two of the programs, those that are highlighted in yellow, do not participate or use the die-cast process. Loma Linda and Washington State University uh, have an application process where you apply directly to them. And there are some benefits to that. If you are interested in those programs, you uh, can avoid completely the die-cast process if you want to put all of your uh, effort into those particular programs, and they're very, very good programs. Um, the others that are highlighted in green, the Franciscan Missionaries of Our Lady, New York Presbyterian and the March Cohort, State University of New York, Buffalo, and Texas A&M, those were all applicants that matched in the second round, and they're all very good programs. And yet those applicants, those particular applicants did not match in the first round, but they were open and matched in the second round. And that significantly uh, increased the success of our applicants last year. So what is a dietetic internship anyway? Um, it is 1,200 hours of supervised practice experience that follows completion of a didactic program in dietetics. It prepares you for entry-level practice in community, clinical, and food service management. Most take 
somewhere around nine or 10 months. There is at least one I can think of that's only seven months long, and there are a few that are up to 12 months. They are, and that's variable dependent on the choice of the program. There are over 260 to choose from. And interns during that time are supervised and mentored one-on-one -on -one by practitioners. It's a very time intensive process. It's labor intensive. That's why it's one intern to one practitioner. And that's why most programs only take six to eight interns. Yes, there are some that take more, and there's a few that take less, but most cohorts are small. Most internships charge tuition, and there are a few that actually pay a stipend. I think I'll pause at this slide and we'll come back and start talking in the next uh, group of uh, the next video, start talking about where to look for internship information. Again, I expect many of you have found that already if you've already started the process, but we'll begin uh, the next set of slides about the application process here. Thanks so much.